Hey everybody, today we're doing limits of exponential functions. Remember that an exponential function is one in which the exponent is a variable, y equals b to the x. We require that b is positive and not equal to 1. Here's what the graphs look like. If b is bigger than 1, then we get exponential growth there on the left. And if b is between 0 and 1, we get exponential decay there on the right. As you look at the graphs, it's not hard to deduce what the end behavior is going to be the limits at positive infinity and negative infinity. When b is greater than 1, as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 0. The situation is reversed when b is between 0 and 1. As x goes to infinity, y goes to 0. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. That makes sense algebraically as well. At least when x is an integer, when you're raising um, b to the x power, you're multiplying b by itself over and over again. So if b is bigger than 1, that product is going to get bigger when you get more factors. And if b is between 0 and 1, that product is going to go towards 0 as you get more and more factors. What about when you do a limit at a finite value? We are helped there by the substitution property. If you have a continuous function, you can do the limit just by plugging in. The exponential functions are continuous, and so we can do those limits just by plugging in. They're super easy. For instance, the limit as x goes to 3 of 2 to the x is 2 to the third, which is 8. And the limit as x goes to 5 of 3 to the negative x is 3 to the negative fifth, or 1 over 243. No problem at all. Let's do two slightly harder problems. Number one, limit as t goes to infinity, e to the 2t minus e to the 5t over 1 minus e to the 3t. We're going to do this a lot like we did for rational functions, one polynomial divided by another. In that case, we looked for the highest power term on the denominator and factored it out of both the denominator and the numerator. Here, I'm going to take that higher exponent for the exponential in the denominator and factor that term out, so e to the 3t. I pull that out of the bottom, pull that out of the top. When I do that, on the top, I'm left with e to the negative t minus e to the 2t. And on the bottom, I'm left with e to the negative 3t minus 1. Those e to the 3t's cancel. Now, as t goes to infinity, the exponentials that have negative exponents are going to go towards 0. So I'm just going to be left with e to the, I'm sorry, negative e to the 2t over negative 1. That's going to go to negative infinity over negative 1, also known as positive infinity. Problem 2. Limit as x goes to negative infinity e to the negative 2x minus 3e to the negative 4x. So both of these exponentials are going towards positive infinity. So if I imagine just kind of plugging in large numbers here, large negative numbers for x, I'm going to get something that looks like um, an infinity minus infinity. So that's indeterminate. We can't tell which infinity is winning in that case. We have to do a little more work. In this case, we're going to factor out e to the negative 2x factoring out the higher exponent that we have there. When I do that, I'm left with 1 minus 3e to the negative 2x inside. Now when I evaluate the limit on the individual factors, the first term, e to the negative 2x, is going towards infinity, and the second, 1 minus 3e to the negative 2x, is going towards negative infinity. Because e to the negative 2x is going towards positive infinity, and then being multiplied by negative 3. So overall, I'm going to get negative infinity on this problem. 